2023 is coming up in, well, in just a couple days, and I'm building a cool project for it with this. This is the Time Card Mini, and it lets me install a Raspberry Pi inside another computer, and it's fully powered by PCI Express. Pretty cool. But it has another trick up its sleeve. You can stick one of these little sandwich boards on it. For the Raspberry Pi 4, there are tons of hats or hardware attached on top. They do anything from add-on little displays, to power over Ethernet, or even cellular modems. But this board is like a reverse of that, so I'm calling it a Pi Sandwich. That's because you stick this on the time card board and then a Compute Module 4 on top, and boom, extra functionality under the Raspberry Pi. What kind of functionality? Well, in this case, they sell a bunch of different GPS modules. The one I'm taking to LTX is this Ublox GPS module. Now, this thing doesn't run cheap. It's like 260 bucks but it's one of the best GPS modules on the market and has another feature that's really cool for time nerds like me. It can use an external OXCO, or Oven Controlled Crystal Oscillator, this tiny thing. Wait, an oven? In there? <laughs> yes, this tiny little chip from SciTime pops onto the sandwich board and it literally has an oven inside. This oven isn't for baking cookies though, it's a special highly accurate oscillator. You see, all computers have oscillators tiny little quartz crystals usually, and they're a clock reference for the computer. Like, the Raspberry Pi has these tiny little oscillators that keep the CPU running right and to count time while it's powered on. But quartz crystals can be finicky. OXCOs actually heat up the crystal inside to something like 100 degrees Celsius, and that makes it way more accurate. In the case of this little guy, accurate to within 5 parts per billion of a true second. The only thing more accurate than that is an atomic clock, like this one. I covered this time card last year. It uses a radioactive rubidium module for even more accuracy. And if you want to get even more serious, and you have a few million bucks, you could build your own little cesium fountain clock, just like the NIST has. But this tiny OXEO uses a lot less power, and it's still plenty accurate for most people. But why do you need this if you already have GPS? GPS provides incredibly accurate time. Well, GPS isn't perfect. Like, if you're inside, it's hard to get a good GPS signal. And if you're in a noisy radio environment, or maybe even over in Ukraine where Russia's been jamming GPS signals, having accurate clock holdover is important. But why? What's accurate time good for? Can't we just use NTP or network time protocol? Yeah, you can, and for most of us it's plenty accurate if you just need to know time down to the millisecond. But every day, more and more things rely on high-precision clocks. Like in VR, more accurate clocks means more accurate position data down to the millimeter. Or what if you're an ill-fated submarine headed to the bottom of the ocean? Too soon? GPS signals don't get too far underwater, so you need a good clock reference to be able to track time and position. And there are more traditional uses, like distributed science. Radio telescopes need to sync signals from different parts of the world accurately. Or in data centers and banks, computers have to have the same time everywhere to match up transactions. Or, in my case, LTX. I'm going to try interviewing 10 home lab creators in less than one hour, and I need to know how much time I have for each interview. To make sure we don't ramble on too long, I built this. This thing is, well, yeah, it's kind of a Frankenstein board, but, but it's cool. I have the time card mini in here with a Compute Module 4 on it. I sandwiched in that GPS module along with the SciTime oscillator, and the antenna connection here lets the board sync up with GPS satellites. Then there's this little USB blink stick. I'm going to use that for the live stream to know when it's time to wrap up an interview and move on to the next one. And over on the GPIO header, I popped this Adafruit display on top of everything, with a little GPIO extender. I wrote a Python script to display some data in the style of Whopper from Wargames. After a little greeting message, it shows the exact time down to the hundredth of a second, and also whether GPS is locked in. My goal? To have the most accurate clock at LTX. And if I wanted, I could pull out even more tricks from the time card. With the full height bracket, I could plug in a pulse per second input and output, or even another external clock reference. You can plug the GPS unit into a network card, or even something like this 200 gigabit NIC, or you can even use the CM4 since it has PTP built right in. PTP is like a way more accurate NTP, and it's pretty much the standard now for time sync on servers and in production studios. There's also one feature I haven't tested at all yet. If you plug this thing into a PC, you can access the Pi's serial console or the GPS module directly through PCI. That's the first time I've seen that on a Raspberry Pi. I've got to stop myself though before I geek out too much about time. 
Before I show you how I built this, I have to warn you, all these parts are fairly expensive for a typical home labber. And to be completely transparent, Timebeat sent these to me for testing. I probably couldn't justify buying one just for the fun of it. But even in total, this solution is still cheaper than most dedicated time appliances. Plus, this thing gives you piception. You can run a Raspberry Pi inside your PC. Anyway, let's get on to what makes this build tick. First, I needed power. You can only power the time card mini through this PCIe connector, and, well, I'm just using a Compute Module 4 I.O. board. It does look funny, but I don't even need to have a Pi running on it to make the I.O. board power the time card. But I did have to spend a few minutes putting down Kapton tape so there aren't any short circuits here. And since I can't stay plugged into an outlet while I go find a GPS signal, I bought this 12 volt battery pack. The whole setup is basically a Pi, plus a Blinkstick Nano, plus an Adafruit display, all sandwiching that GPS module on the Time Card Mini. But none of this works without software, so I started hacking away. I built a little Python service that watches Timebeat to see if GPS time is locked in. Then there's a Python service that prints text on the Adafruit display, the time and whether GPS time is locked in. And finally, there's a service that manages the blink stick. It turns green for the first three minutes of every five minute interview, then it's amber for the fourth, orange for the fifth, and then red for the last 30 seconds. It flashes red right at the end for a little bit. Instead of me and Chris looking at our watches, we'll see the LED and hopefully that'll keep our interviews running on time. It'll probably also add a little stress, but that makes live events even more fun. But under it all, I don't know if I'll have a good time or a bad time, but I can guarantee I'll have the most accurate time at LTX. Unless Jake goes crazy and adds in a stratum zero clock for whale land. I should be able to say I have the most precise clock at LTX this year. <laughs> we'll see. All the code's open source on GitHub, and I even wrote up detailed instructions for how to set it all up. Thanks to my patrons and sponsors, I can continue open sourcing all my work. So LTX is just two days away. I've had a crazy week, but I think the solution will work. Make sure you sign up to get notified when our live stream begins. I'll be talking to Patrick from Serve the Home, Jake from LTT, Wendell from Level 1 Techs, Jeff from Craft Computing, Chris from Chris Titus Tech, Quinn from Snazzy Labs, Brandon from Tech Hut, Colton from Hardware Haven, and even Tim and Dan from LTT. It's going to be a blast, and we're hoping to raise some money for the IT DRC. Well, we say our tagline is connecting communities in crisis, but really it is to bring technical resources and emergency communications to communities after a disaster and then uh, help them with resources till they're able to kind of stand on their own. Fires, floods, tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes are all things that our resources will be helpful for. They impact the communities and so you know, we'll respond accordingly. You can even donate today by clicking that link over on the side. I'll see you live at LTX, and until then, I'm Jeff Gerling.